before this video starts, I just want to say a couple things. First, I just started a second channel where I'm going to be posting gameplay, shorts, and pretty much anything I feel like magic-wise. The link will be down below in the description. Also, as soon as this video goes live, I'm going to be live streaming a league with this deck, the one that I'm taking today at twitch.tv slash mtggalaxy. It'll be in the description as well. Hope to see you there. Modern Horizons 2 has given birth to countless new archetypes, and one of my personal favorites, Five Color Domain Shardless Zoo. Now, sure, Zoo was around before Modern Horizons 2, but I think it's safe to say that Modern Horizons 2 pretty much made this iteration of the deck exist. I mean, there are 16 cards from the set in the main deck and 6 in the sideboard. Now, without further ado, let's get on to the deck tech. When you hear the word zoo, you think, oh, I'm gonna cast wild in the cuddle and bolt my opponent until they die. Well, sure, this deck can sometimes play like that. It more often plays out as kind of a mid-range value Jund-like deck, but just a five color version. The primary game plan of the deck is to get all five basic land types out on turn two. We do this by running two triome. We run one Indatha triome and one Savai triome. We play pretty much no one drop so we can get that entered tapped on the first turn. The second turn we get the opposing shock land, so steam vents for the Indatha or breeding pool for the Savai, and then we can drop one of our big impact two drops, either a territorial Kavu, a scion of Draco, or tribal flames our opponent for five. Admittedly the tribal flames isn't as impactful, but it's still a pretty decent card if we want to play it on turn two. Territorial Kavu is by far the best card in the deck. A two mana 5-5 five five is probably comparable to Tarmogoyf in terms of power and toughness, and when it attacks, getting to either rummage or exile target card from a graveyard is absolutely fantastic. Scion of Draco, although not being as good as the Kavu, is still a fantastic 2-drop. A 4-4 four, four flyer that gives other creatures keywords that can't be pushed or bolted is just fantastic for this deck. Tribal Flames, as I said, is more often than not kind of just a removal spell, but if we have really nothing else to do, we can just Lava Axe our opponent on turn 2. A 3-drop spot is also value-packed. General Ferris Rockerk is probably in contention with Kavu for the best card in the deck. Although it is pretty slow, which is why we take it out against Burner Prowess, it does a ton of work against any other fair decks. Having Hexproof from Monocolored is great. Pretty much the only options to kill out are Assassin's Trophy and Abrupt Decay. Aside from that, a 4-4 Golem whenever we cast pretty much any spell in our deck can close our games very quickly against an opponent. Shardless Agent also works great in this deck as just a value creature. Getting to cast it on turn 3 and getting a Kavu is just value. Even better, casting it on turn 4 after we cast General Ferris Rockerk more often than not gives us 5 mana of cards and 2 4-4. Four four. Our last 3 drop is Mantis Rider. It's just a great aggressive card in this deck. It also gets Hexproof through Scion of Drake. The last creature we have in the deck is Bloodbred Elf. This is great on turn 4 after we cast the General for the same reason Shardless is. If we're lucky, we can cast into a Shardless into a Kavu, and if we have General out, it's pretty much GG's if they don't have a Sweeper. We also have a few solid removal cards in this deck. Lightning Helix is great, and so is our one of Lightning Bolt. These are both just very solid removal spells that can go face if we need to. Helix is also great because, as you'll be able to tell, we'll take a bunch of damage from my mana base. The last main deck card is Mana Morphos. We use this because it helps enable General Ferris Rockrook even more, and it helps us cast cards if we're locked under a Blood Moon. Speaking of mana base, let's go over it. We've already discussed the two triomes, but what else do we have? For Sharks, we have Breeding Pool, Stomping Ground, Sacred Foundry, Steam Vents, and Temple Garden. For Fetches, we have Arid Mesa, Bloodstained Mire, Flooded Strand, Misty Rainforest, Scalding Tarn, and Wooded Foothills. Overall, the mana base is just designed to get the colors that we need when we need them. The sideboard is very much a work in progress for me as I'm working on tuning it. As for now, we have Chalice of the Void against Burn and Prowess because that's a very hard matchup because we take a ton of damage off our mana base and have very little stack interaction. Cleansing Wildfire against Tron, Curse Totem against Asmoran and Mordekaiser and Occult Card decks, Rest in Peace against Graveyard decks, and Prismatic Ending for decks where we just want a little bit more removal and interaction. These are going to be brought in against primarily Blitz decks to deal with their one drops and Stoneblade decks to deal with the germs from Batter Skull and Cauldra Complete. I'll admit it, Prismatic Ending isn't the best sideboard card in this deck because if we cascade off of it, it pretty much only hits those germs, but I think the downside is good enough that we should have it in our sideboard either way. Because this is a mid-range deck, we do have a lot of options in terms of customizing our deck to the current metagame. A few cards I'm looking at. I am considering some amount of Stubborn Denials either in the main or the sideboard, 
Because although it's really, really bad to cascade into one of those, it does help a ton against any combo decks like Ad Nauseam or any cascade combo decks like Living End or the Crashing Footfalls decks. Admittedly, Chalice on Zero does take care of those decks, but if we're going into very cascade heavy metas, I think it'll be worth to have a few of those in the sideboard. I'm also looking at some different options for Storm or Prowess in the sideboard in case Chalice just doesn't do enough. One option I'm considering is Kaya's Guile, because we gaining four life and making them a sack of creatures is just great. It also incidentally shuts off some graveyard interaction if they have DRC, for example. Something else I'm looking at is Weather the Storm, because if we cascade into it, we automatically gain six life, and Weather the Storm is just Weather the Storm. Some other options for the main board. I did see one gameplay video of someone running Lightning Skelemental. This is a very interesting take on it. I think getting Lifelink from Draco does really help against, the, once again, the burn matchups, and I think a bit of discard is pretty good in this deck, because we want to disrupt our opponent's game plan, obviously. I think that could be something I'm looking to in the future. Another option for Mana Morphos is Burning Tree Emissary. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this one. I think being able to go into other stuff off of a Blood Moon and getting to draw a card is just better than having an, an extra bear on the board, but I don't know, that could be reconsidered for sure. Speaking of Blood Moon, since it's not that prevalent in the metagame right now, I'm kind of fine of just doing nothing and hoping to hedge the Blood Moon matchups. However, if it does become more prevalent, we have a couple options. Prismatic Ending is pretty good against Blood Moon if we have a Manamorphos. We could just Manamorphos into a white and a green whatever, then use the red from a land to kill the Blood Moon. We can also have some amount of Assassin's Trophies in the board, because if they cast Blood Moon, we can just just flood a black and a green and then kill the blood moon after the blood moon resolves. I do admit taking our turn two off if we're on the play to do that feels kind of bad, but if we're going into a blood moon heavy meta game, what can you really do? I've seen a bunch of mill decks recently, so I am thinking about adding a singleton ember cool in the sideboard. Finally, I'm considering one of our fetches with a basic mountain because it helps hedge against Field of Ruin, Path to Exile, and Cleansing Wildfire, because all those are currently just stone rains against us. It is going to feel terrible when you dry it though. So that's about it for Five Color Shardless Zoo. What do you think of the deck? Any questions? Feel free to leave it either in the comments below or in my Twitch chat. I'm going to be going live right as this video is released. Twitter, Twitch, TCG, Player Affiliate, and Decklist are all in the description down below. And as always, have a great day.